Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Norman here with Endless Adventures. And the plan for today is to give you all a, a look at our rig, which is a 2023 Airstream Base Camp 20X, and a look at our setup here at home. Where do we park it? How do we store it? Parking pad, all, all that type of stuff. Like we shared, we were a little hesitant at first to even get into an adventure like this. We had never towed before. It's it's easy to kind of let your fear and your doubt make excuses for you. We initially were like, well, you know, we don't really have anywhere to park it. What about the fence? I think, like I said, it's easy to kind of let your fear make excuses. Instead, we just kind of jumped in with both feet and we had a little bit of a learning curve. We had to make some adjustments, think outside the box. We're really glad that we did. So one of those adjustments that we had to make when we first moved into this house, put up the fence, and we put in an eight foot gate at the bottom of the driveway. We thought, you know, that's gonna be perfect. Ride on mower, anything else we would need to get in and out. Eight foot is plenty. Then we start looking at campers. We look at the Airstream. The Airstream is just about seven foot, 10 inches. I think it's seven, nine and a half. Way too close of a, of a fit to be able to get that into the backyard. Good thing we have a great fence company. We love Lou and his crew. Luckily, they were able to come out, put a 10 foot gate in for us, which I'll show you here. So there it is, 10 foot gate, the bottom of the driveway here. Plenty of room, swing both of them open. I'll take you into the back here, which is where we store it. There she is. Starting in the front here, you've got your Airstream branded there, right on the front on the tanks. Don't mind the bucket. Like I said, it's winter. It's a little extra protection for the electrical and everything else that's contained under here. We do also have just kind of like a canvas bag drawstring at the bottom to kind of keep everything covered and protected. Um, but there's your manual jack. You can upgrade. We have not done it yet. You can upgrade to a, an electric jack. Make your life a little easier. Save your arm. Hitch lock we've got on there, which we really like. Kind of talk about that in a later episode, some of our favorite little mods and upgrades that we've done. Front compartment here, two little bungees, keep this closed. Open it up, you get a little wet storage there. Definitely would not put anything in it that you care about getting wet. We just store things like extra hose, propane hose, folding, folding tire, four-way, stuff like that. But when you lift this up here, slide it back, you'll see that inside you got two 20-pound propane tanks. And the neat part is it's set up that when one runs out, it'll just automatically kind of swap over to the other so you don't have to come out here and switch things over. Definitely useful to have that kind of extra little storage in the front of the rig here. But like I said, definitely don't count on it staying perfectly dry. Take you over to the side here. So this is the driver's side or the, the hookup side at the campground. First thing I'll point out is the auxiliary propane connection. It's kind of in the front, more towards the driver's side here. See that yellow there? It's kind of hard to see here. See the spare tire right behind it as well as a full size spare tire up underneath. That propane connection is good for your grill, griddle, whatever you're using at the campsite. Um, it is low flow, perfect to connect, so you don't have to bring your own tank to connect your grill. Next thing to point out, continuing around on the side here, right here, we have an extra connection, solar ready connection. It's pre wired for extra solar. There are solar panels, so there's three. 100 watt flexible solar panels up on the roof. So 300 watts of solar, um, but this is pre-wired for extra. So if you wanted to hook up there, I'm continuing over. Here's your electrical connection. This is your smart plug, 30 amp, 125 volt. Right there. Um, one of the things that we highly recommend 
which we'll talk about on you know later episodes some of our favorite favorite gadgets and things like that is the power watchdog which is a surge protector to connect but we'll talk about that at a later time next thing uh, i'll point out right down here dedicated storage for your sewer hose runs across the width of the rig it's a little kind of screw enclosure here Just twist that take that off sewer hoses fit right in there one of the things that i will point out that you'll hear from quite a few people is that this can come loose going down the road there is a little kind of uh, string on it there so you won't lose the cover completely you definitely would lose the hose that's inside so we use just kind of like a little carabiner type clip to kind of clip it there and make sure it stays closed continuing down the side here you do have a little door a little storage compartment two little latches here open that up we use that for things like the clear elbow for the sewer you can keep an extra hose in there as well if you have a campsite where you need an extra long hookup gloves stuff like that are good for in there it does slide around a little bit so just keep that in mind right next to it all of your your hookup for the sewer hose right in the middle there two handles left is the gray right is the black tank the tank capacities on this fresh water is 23 gallon gray water is 28 gallon and black tank is 21 gallon other thing to point out on this side there is a light so if you were emptying and needed a little more light to see uh, there is a light there but i will say one of the things you'll hear about on forums and things like that is it's known as the ghost of wally light um, wally was the airstream founder and it's known as that because it is known to kind of just come on <laughs> randomly what we had our dealership do they were they were good enough to instead of it being a push on and off now we have a little toggle switch um, to kind of keep that from happening keep that from coming on as we're driving down the road keep moving down the side driver's side here see those kind of bigger tires there on the 20x here you have all of your your inlets and exhausts um, you get the exhaust for the furnace the exhaust for the suburban tankless water heater you've got your lock door on your water inlet um, you flush city water all those connections here there's an outdoor shower Let's see if i can open this up you won't really see the shower head we took that off you see the little threaded part up top there that's where that connects to but like I said, still is winter here, so we take that off in the winter. Just one less thing that could freeze up. Rear hatch. One of the things I'll point out, and again, we'll talk about this probably in a later episode in a little more detail. One of the upgrades that we did do was the rear backup camera up there. Our dealership was able to install that for us. Um, but just kind of your standard rear hatch door here. Amanda, when she takes your inside, I'm sure we'll show you some of the storage. Coming over to the passenger side, you've got a standard GFCI outlet here. Could use it for any number of things outside of the campground. One of the fun things that we've used it for already is for some Christmas lights. We did a, a Christmas in July at one campsite and uh, kind of decked the whole campsite out. Sleek look, face camp logo there light above the door which is pretty bright honestly kind of light up the whole campsite at night if you needed to coming back around to the front here and that's pretty much it Amanda's gonna kind of show you around the inside a little bit so you can get a sense of the layout all right, so just before we head inside, a couple of things on the exterior entryway. So the X gives you this nice two-step entry. And then to hold the door back, you have a little hook so it doesn't hit the side of the camper with a little bit of a bumper, too. Um, we have this on the back door also. Let's head inside. So as we come in on our left side, we have all of our light controls. This first one here is for our exterior door light. 
these two in the middle are for interior lights and then the last one is for our bathroom light I have a couple of hooks too for some different things. We keep our dust pans and our brooms hung on these hooks. We also keep a small bag for trash here as well. We have a little welcome mat from Airstream. And then as you enter over onto the right side, we have this currently set up as a bed, which will show you what the dinette looks like also. And then in the back, this also converts into a bed area as well, as well as some bench seating with some table set up. So we will start in the front and then work our way around. So this front area we use as a bed for Mason and we typically just keep it in bed mode during our trips. It does also pop up to have some table seating with this bench here. The nice thing about this table too is it will swivel. So regardless of where people are sitting within the bench, you're able to get your way out. And then underneath, we just have some storage. So we found a lot of different bins at Target that we use for our electrical, our water setup, different things for sewer, such as gloves and flushing hoses. But these hefty totes fit beautifully under here and allow us to keep some stuff out of the way because as we go through, you'll see that storage is pretty slim in this unit, but we find some creative ways to make everything work. We also have our fire extinguisher, easy to access. And as we slide over on this side, we have an outlet available, should we need to plug anything in. On the bottom here, we have all of our fuses and our panel, should we need to access any of that. We do have tank warmers for both our fresh water and our gray and black tanks. We have a 12 volt here as well as some USB and our master electrical disconnect. These two storage bins here we call our pantry. So we have a couple of storage bins in here. We typically put things such as breads and snacks in these two. This is another storage container which we have first aid in here as well as extended pantry space. Up above we have our refrigerator freezer combo. So we have our freezer up top and as well as our refrigerated storage, which I do actually have to say, I was a little bit worried about the size of this fridge, but for the three of us, we can stock this full once for a week long trip and we've had no issues. And then up above, we do have a microwave, which this is a little bit high for me. I'm about 5'3 and I can't really access it, but Norman will if we need it. And up above the front bed and dinette area, we have these nice storage nets, which these don't hold a significant amount of weight, but it is perfect for the smaller things such as extra bags, coats, towels, and things like that. And then as we move our way backwards, we have our wet bath. So in here, we have a shower and toilet combination, which this, even though it looks very tight, is actually pretty spacious. Um, we have the shower head, which typically goes up on that wall. We have them disconnected for the winter. We have a toilet and storage that was included with the base camp, which we use a couple of different travel bottles for shampoo, body wash, things like that. And it fits perfectly in there. We have this curtain for the window, which is Velcro. We also have the shower curtain, which was included as well. It works pretty good. There is also a lightweight clothesline up here should you need to hang anything if it is wet and as well as that bar, which is great. There is a light up in here as well as a fan, which works phenomenally, we've had no issues. And as we slide on over to the left side, we have three fairly good storage compartments, which we call our closet. So this top one we use for Norman, the middle one I use for my things. And then the bottom is a little bit tighter. We use this for Mason's. Um, it doesn't go as deep because of the wheel well. So in these, we use storage cubes to pack all of our clothes and we can easily fit four or five storage cubes in each of these. And it's perfect for about a week long trip. And we'll also utilize campground laundry as necessary, just so we don't have to pack as much, but works really well for us. And then as we keep moving back, we do have an AC unit on the roof. This also has a heat strip in it. So we do have a furnace heat but we can use this to just take the chill off in the morning if we don't need the full furnace running. And as you continue to come around on the side, it's kind of like our control panel hub. So we have our Victron, which is our solar up on the roof. 
We also have our tank monitors, so our fresh water capacity, our gray water capacity, and our black tank capacity, which we are winterized, so that's some antifreeze in those tanks. We also have the Suburban for our furnace, so this is how we control the temperature in the camper. And then this controls the temperature of our water, so our water heater. We have USB plugs here as well. We did install a mount for a small TV, which when we're in transit, we do not have on just because this was an aftermarket install. We have a TV that will mount here. We'll show you that in the spring too. And we just use our streaming services and internet, which makes it super easy. In the back, we have the same setup with these nice storage bins. So these, we like to put our coats in. We can put extra towels if we don't have any room underneath. Um, different things for the kitchen, hand towels, paper towels, things like that. I have a few leftover items up there from last season. But again, these don't hold a bunch of weight, but they are pretty good for storing things up out of the way. And then this space does become our bed. So it is about a king size bed. It's perfect for us. So we did make an upgrade last year of a three inch foam topper, which will show you our whole bed setup in the spring. We do have a power outlet way in the back that we've run a strip. So when our bed is made, we have access to multiple outlets should we need it to charge any of our devices. The bed itself really isn't that hard to break down or put up. It takes a couple of minutes to set up or break down in either direction. There's storage built right in for the legs and the tops of the tables, which is really nice and helps to keep them out of the way. So once we have it in full bed mode back here, you can see it's quite a large bed. And then again, we got a foam topper last year, which was a huge upgrade. But down below is this area where we gain a lot of storage and we use some nice woven bins that squeeze in here perfectly and we can fit things all the way back. And then the passenger side bench has just a bunch of open storage area that we don't really utilize because it is hard to get down there when the bed is made but it is plenty of storage should you need any extra. We also do have a storage compartment down here that we really don't utilize. We will typically put stuff on top and use the hatch to access it. But there is a little lightweight storage down at the bottom. And there is storage under this bench over here that we will use and access from the back hatch. And then the back hatch here too does have some storage. So you have these netted storage areas one on the bottom. This is a whiteboard on this side, which is nice to write down any notes. This is just a blackout curtain. There's a window in the back. And then if you want this door open, this is a screen that unrolls and snaps in to give you some nice airflow in the back of the rig. One of the big attractions of the base camp is having this big hatch door along with this middle entryway. So if you don't have a truck that you can store your bikes in or kayaks in while you're in transit, you can put them through this back hatch. And there are also tie downs built right in to the base camp. So there's D-rings here. There's another one down there. And there's also some up front here in the floor. And we have these on both sides all the way down. So you can tie down any gear that you might have and want to bring with you that you can't fit otherwise. So as we continue to make our way over to our kitchen area, so we have a nice deep sink with a cover with our faucet, which we might change to something a little bit higher because this can be a little bit low. We have a two burner cooktop and plenty of storage underneath. We use this area for things like spices, scissors, anything on hand that you need to have in the kitchen. This bottom area we'll use to store all of our kitchen items. So extra wash and hand towels. We will store our tank treatment down at the bottom with extra toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. But again, we will go over all of that in the spring once we are loaded up. The nice silverware tray that came with the Airstream, which keeps things nice and organized. And then we have another deep compartment in the middle, which is great for pots and pans, plates, and a shorter storage container down here, um, which we usually put our trash bags and any small items in the bottom. So that's a pretty rough tour of our base camp. We're gonna go into a much further detail as we get it ready for the spring and show you exactly how we set up our storage solutions and get everything to fit in here, which will probably be a little bit longer of a video, but a lot more comprehensive if you're someone that has a base camp and is struggling with storage or just wanna see how we manage this small space, which is perfect for us. But we hope you found this video helpful. You think it's gonna be helpful? I think so too, but we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Say bye. bye. <laughs>